Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell, keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. First Corinthians chapter 12. Spirit of God, help our weaknesses. Let us be communicators of spirit and life. The subject of the gift of the spirit has scarcely been dealt with, especially in recent time in the body of Christ. Great men like Papa E. Hagin E.W. Kenyon, T.L. Osborne and great men and women who ministered powerful in the spirit from the 40s, the 50s then the, the faith movement and the charismatic revival that swept across the mid 60s down to the late 70s into the early 80s and after that many people have experienced the ministry of the spirit we have written books about the gifts of the spirit not just the gifts but dimensions of operation in the spirit but i think in my opinion and, and may god forgive me if i sound proud but i think there is a very big gap in the understanding of people over the gifts of the spirit the truth is that even those who walk in them cannot properly explain them it's just been from one manuscript theologically communicated to another and so it's, it's largely a repetition but tonight i trust that god will help us to do justice in the name of jesus christ first corinthians chapter 12. when jesus walked the earth jesus manifested certain dimensions of the holy spirit that that caused the people in his day to marvel. The Gospels are full of exclamations of shock and wonder as to the invincibility of Jesus Christ. Three and a half years, but he moved in such proportions of power and grace. Are we together? And Jesus began to mentor, he taught, but he took out his time to mentor 12 people. There were other different groups 72 and etc but the 12 people he began to mentor them he taught them on several things and when you read the gospels you see um the book of matthew mark luke all of them are wonderful but notice that the communicators did not emphasize the ministry of the holy spirit there were certain dimensions but there was very little emphasis it was john 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 the apostle are we together now when you read from chapter 14 chapter 15 chapter 16 it was an the entire those scriptures were an exegesis on the personality of the holy spirit jesus was introducing the person of the holy spirit to them he called 
him different names a helper a standby etc etc they had seen the manifestations of jesus at a certain time he empowered them and sent them two by two the bible says they returned with wonders yet they did not understand the dynamics of what they were doing they said master even the demons were subject to us in thy name and he said do not rejoice that the demons are subject to you let me give you another reason and then he says i saw satan falling so several things do you know even the apostles themselves did not have a thorough understanding as to the gifts of the spirit the gifts of the spirit did not start manifesting in the new testament it's always been there in different dimensions but no one was able to construct a theology a doctrine out of it and communicate it intelligently to the body of christ it was paul the apostle paul the apostle who was granted access to the mysteries of christ came to the church in corinth now theologically speaking the church in corinth where they were at a period of spiritual renaissance the power of god was breaking out all kinds of things they did not know the name of what was manifesting through them they knew that the holy spirit found a lavish dimension of um, um access to that territory people were prophesying to a point that there was disorderliness so when paul came paul knew that he needed to build a theological basis for the understanding of the ministry of the holy spirit and then importantly the gifts of the spirit are we together now so paul now is speaking to them on the gifts of the holy spirit verse 4 12 verse 4 please let's be very fast let's trust god for grace hallelujah it starts from verse 1 if you read it says now concerning spiritual gifts please give us verse 1 then we'll go to verse 4 it says now concerning spiritual gifts the holy ghost is speaking through apostle paul i do not want you koinonia to be ignorant meaning that you can be born again filled with the holy spirit even walking in the gifts of the spirit but you are ignorant of the dynamics the inner workings of it and it's impossible to gain mastery when you are trying it takes understanding it says concerning spiritual gifts brethren so he's speaking to people who are born again speaking to those who have had an encounter with the life of god i do not want you to be ignorant let's go to verse 4 there are diversities of gifts but the same spirits there this is a very interesting information notice the construction of paul paul is teaching people who he wants to have you can sit down brother or find somewhere if you can't sit on his seat you can sit uh, whatever there he says there are diversities of gifts let me tell you what that means look up please paul is saying you are going to see people move in dimensions that are unusual dimensions that will stretch you sometimes beyond your normal um gentleman hold on my friend listen hold on just leave the guy he's crying just leave him there please don't worry let him just shift just shift a little there and leave him let's just leave him with god there and it's all right he was covering the camera thank you there are diversities of gifts listen do you know why paul brought this because if you understand the gift of the spirit it can stretch faith except you know god there are certain gifts that are controversial in their operation so paul is saying look the first information church i want you to know is that in your walk of faith you are going to encounter men that will move so strangely in the gifts of the spirit it will stretch your intellect it will stretch your education you are going to see things you are not familiar with but i give you a note it is the same spirit that is operating are you getting that information now so someone can come for a meeting like this and watch people fly under the anointing are we together now and watch people running out by the spirit and say this is this is strange i am not used to the holy spirit moving this way that's why paul started by giving us this information that the gifts of the spirit are diverse 
Brothers and sisters, the first information I want you to know tonight is that the gifts of the Spirit are not nine. The gifts of the Spirit are only theologically classified based on the revelation that Paul's exegesis gives us. But the gifts of the Spirit are not nine. That's why the Word of God must be studied from the vista of the Spirit. Otherwise, all that you will just read is theology. He says there are how many gifts? Diversities. Meaning there were certain gifts Paul did not see but are available. The gifts never stopped as nine. The gifts are as diverse as the alignment of the saints. Meaning that you are going to see certain gifts that you may not exactly find a name for them. And so chances are that when you see it, you're going to say, no, 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 this may not be of God. There are diversities of gifts. Are you learning something tonight? It says, but the same spirit. When you study God's generals, one of the controversies between two of the generals, Alexander Doe and um, Maria Woodward Eater. Now listen, Maria Woodward Eater, historically speaking, was the one who brought what we call trans evangelism a phenomenon where people under a strange influence of the spirit will not only fall under the anointing but will freeze in a position for hours it's not a phenomenon that they had seen it was in our meetings like this guy now he can stand like that for five hours you can't do that ordinarily with your hand and you can see people stop like this for hours now watch this they did not have internet and the media was not strong for people to have access to themselves. So when Alexander Doe, although a great man, mighty man who moved in the healing anointing, when he stumbled across a woman at the other side of the earth who was carrying out mighty miracles, he found out from her meetings that people were freezing and stopping. Alexander Doe said, that woman, number one, the fact that she's a woman, ministry is under the spirit of divination and maria would what it has said no i'm a woman who loves god god anointed me and called me to be an evangelist this is a man of god anointed alexander doe was the spiritual mayor of illinois but at the zion city yet in that level that that supposed high level of spirituality he could not discern that although this manifestation was foreign to him it was still of the Holy Ghost. This is one of the biggest limitations that the church has given the Holy Spirit. That the fact that God is not moving the way he moved five years ago does not mean he's not the one moving. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. There are manifestations that you see that you may never be able to capture. The Holy Ghost can open your eyes and conjure scriptures together that will paint a picture that reflects that experience. But you will not see it at plain sight. And so chances are that you will doubt the fact that it is God moving in that dimension. Smith Wigglesworth will be moved powerfully under the spirit and he would carry a dead man and punch the man not that he was an angry man he didn't even know what moved him what is the name of that gift listen let me tell you something are you seeing why when he finished teaching he told them i show you a more excellent way a more excellent way of ministering these gifts perfectly because if you lack love there will be criticism there will be cynicism are we together why did you heal this brother by hugging him where is it in the bible that you hug a brother and heal him and so you say this is the devil where is it in the bible that a congregation hold their hands together to pray in tongues that means praying in tongues is demonic publicly are you seeing now and sometimes i have taught us here that the bible is a prophetic book you can make it preach anything. A herbalist can show you scriptures here. 
that will cause you to walk in witchcraft many things happen in the bible demons spoke donkeys spoke people spoke in their backsliding state prophets who doubled into divination spoke it takes the spirit to divide the word accurately and show you which was sponsored the part of scripture that was sponsored by the spirit is what we call the word of god are you getting blessed there are diversities of gifts diversities of gifts in this end time we are going to see moves of the spirit in proportions and dimensions that will bring harsh criticism but will birth the glory of God in unusual ways point number two please let's hurry up number five media help us there are differences in ministries now do you know what he's saying that means under the same gift the way you dispense it like a pharmacist giving drugs is different the same gift but the dispensing of that gift the administration of it is different that means you can see three prophets are we together but the character and the nature of that operation is different verse 6 then he says there are diversities of activities but it's the same God who works all and in all so let's get to the gifts seven but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all now here is the key the gift of the spirit is for the profit of the body the profit of the body the profit of the body not the profit of a denomination not the profit of a man of God not a profit of just an individual it is for the profit of all verse 8 for to one is given the word of wisdom so Paul is classifying them now are we together now through the spirit to another is given the word of knowledge through the same spirit please let's run it down next verse to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing take note do you see an s there with gifts not a gift of healing gifts of healing by the same spirit next verse to another oh dear media is playing a lot of games with our our passion let me open it so that i can read it there's no time for this to another faith by the same spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another various or diverse kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues 11 and we stop there it says but all this worketh that one and the same very same spirit dividing unto every man severally as he wills now close your bible and let's talk so paul for the sake of order remember the entire text of first of first corinthians 12 13 14 the entire subject can be summarized in one word first corinthians 14 verse 40 it says let all things be done decently and in order so paul he, his 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 passion is to see that everything is done decently but in order to do that he had to build like a wise master builder and teach them the gifts of the spirit are not limited to nine yes it is true that there are nine gifts theologically defined according to the experience of the present day church theologically speaking the nine gifts let's work with the nine gifts for the sake of understanding um, many of us know that they are divided into three categories the first category is called the revelatory gifts the gifts that have to do with revelation and insight from the realm of the spirit revelatory gifts and there are three of the revelatory gifts the word of wisdom the word of knowledge and the discerning of spirits i'm not going to dwell on all of them i'll just touch them there are a few i want us to just stop there revelatory gifts 
That's the first classification, theologically speaking, that the gifts of the Spirit are classified into three first revelatory gifts. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits. Number two, utterance or vocal gifts. That's the second classification. Gifts that have to do with speech, communication. All the gifts will require communication, but that this one's the primary medium for dispensing them is your mouth, speech. The gift of diverse kinds of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, and the gift of prophecy comes under this classification. The gift of diverse kinds of tongues, don't just write tongues, diverse kinds of tongues, the gifts of interpretation of tongues, and the gift of prophecy. And then number three, power gifts. The third classification, theologically speaking, power gifts. And that includes the gift of faith, the gifts of healing, add S to gifts, the gifts of healing, and then the working of miracles. So three, 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 the revelatory gifts that make you think like Christ, the utterance gifts that make you speak like Christ, the power gifts that make you act like Christ. The revelatory gifts make you think like Christ. The vocal gifts make you speak like Christ. The power gifts cause you to act like Christ. Are we together? Let's take them one by one. Very quickly. Number one, word of wisdom. What is it? What exactly is the word of wisdom? <laughs> the word of wisdom is the ability to supernaturally profess solutions to situations and problems. The supernatural ability to profess solutions to situations, problems, challenges that are beyond your current level of education sorry i'm fast i'm running supernatural ability to profess solutions to problems and situations beyond your current level of education exposure physical maturity and experience when you sustain an ability in the spirit to communicate divine ideas and solutions to human problems problems that defy your current level of exposure problems that defy the, the 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 knowledge that your level of maturity should have brought your level of education and your level of experience is called the word of stone access to supernatural illumination access to supernatural understanding you need it now let me tell you this many people have downplayed on this gift of the spirit you know why because in our thinking we think it is not charismatic do you know do you know truly let me tell you this is one of the apex of the apostolic ministry not even power gifts not revelatory gifts it's impossible to claim you're working in the apostolic office truly and lack the gift of wisdom because the apostolic office is first an administrative office Jesus himself manifested this John chapter 8 when you read 1 to 11 it was the 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 issue of the woman who was caught in adultery John chapter 8 1 to 11 we're not going to we're not going to read all that because of time, but just write it. John chapter 8, 1 to 11. Jesus was teaching and he sat down somewhere. And then the Pharisees and scribes caught a woman in adultery. You know, every time I read this story, I'm surprised. Where was the man? You see that victimizing women did not start today. No, the man may be part of them. The goal was to pin Jesus. You, you see it now? Let me tell you where you need this gift because this our world is full of wicked men and women who will look for every and anything to throw you, destroy your business, destroy your ministry, destroy you down. You need the gift of the word of wisdom. And then they came to Jesus 
sorry there's no time let me just quote it threw that woman in front of him and he said Jesus you claim you're a prophet you claim you are by here is a test we caught this woman in adultery in the very act of it very act means that there should be a man he said man you can go the woman let's just go <laughs> you see how wicked those people were then when they threw him they now said Moses said I hope you know that part of the condition to be a true prophet is that you must acknowledge every other prophet that has come so if Jesus now rejected Moses they'll say you see you're a fake prophet and if Jesus said yes you are right they'll say now you have submitted to our religious governing authorities that was a difficult situation you will be faced with situations in your life where yes and no will still put you in trouble both yes and no will land you in trouble your enemies is like penalty you know how they they, they pay football and they've pinned you you are the goalkeeper they're about to pay the the people are already shaking themselves it's at that point you need to tap into this dimension of the gift of the spirit people vow that because of tribalism they will drive you out of your job the boss says something your superior and direct boss and the manager says something conflicting statements they carry the file and drop and two of them are calling you let me tell you you don't need education you need the gift of the word of wisdom you obey the one directly under you they sack two of you you obey the one above you you come back and meet the one in your unit it helps us to think like Christ he says let this mind permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus business people need this mind every leader needs this understanding and here's what Jesus did they thought Jesus was going to say certain things Jesus kept writing writing the Holy Ghost was moving him the fountain of wisdom self then he lifted up his head in confidence and here's what he said he who does not have sin he was talking about it's another way of saying I'm the only one who is qualified to cast the stone you get it and then he said he just like Joseph said find a man who is discreet and wise it was another way of saying I'm here he who does not have sin to cast the stone and I'm sure he was the oldest guy who was the other party there and he lifted the stone and he dropped it everyone dropped it and he said woman where are thine accusers and she turned he said neither do I accuse you go and sin no more Jesus manifested that was not word of knowledge that was the gift of the word of wisdom how many times we have been whipped by life because we lack this an opportunity that would have honored you how many pastors who stood before government officials would have made certain statements by the spirit that would have given them access to certain things imagine how many foolish decisions our loved ones have taken born again and filled with the holy spirit but not allowing these possibilities find expression you need the gift of the word of wisdom in your life education is limited your experiences are limited you cannot wait to respond to life only based on your exposure and experience you will need that grace can we pray in one minute and cry to the God of heaven and say Lord I'm tired of foolish decisions I access wisdom by the Spirit the word of wisdom my life is full of challenges that need to be surmounted and Lord I need a dimension of wisdom that is beyond my age there are many of us in ministry you you have challenges financially administratively in terms of growth and membership there are many of us here you need grace you don't know what to do should I get a job should I do business you, you need the word of wisdom you need the word of wisdom a supply of intelligence that is above this realm you need God to communicate something that bails you out lift your voice and pray in one minute help me oh God spirit of the living God I open up to you my destiny is at the mercy of your wisdom speak to me tired of piercing myself again and again with needless sorrows when your wisdom can bail me out of the vicissitudes of life
Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Please sit down. We have to run. Just help those under the anointing. In 2004, I spent three weeks praying this gift into my life. Three weeks. God is my witness. Praying it into my life. I said, Lord, you cannot send me as foolish as I am. And I am too young to make the decisions I should make. I need a supply of intelligence that is higher. Listen, some mistakes in life don't have second chance. Some answers, the Bible says to not be hasty. You can stand before your destiny helper and blow up your opportunity forever. That's why Jesus kept quiet. Because this is not a usual communication. You need the spirit to speak. How many people have stood before their supervisors? How many people have stood before their financial helpers? How many people have stood before their boss? He says, I will give you a mouthpiece and a wisdom that your enemies will not be able to gainsay or resist. Number two, the word of knowledge. What is it? The word of knowledge is a supernatural insight and access into past and present events with a view to proffering solutions with a view to proffering solutions access into happenings access into occurrences sometimes even occurrences that predate your own birth Our world is full of wickedness and we need this dimension of the Holy Spirit that can help us to go back in time and piece together useful informations that help us to interpret the happenings in our lives. Are we together now? Oftentimes the secret to the future is in the past. When we can sustain the eyes to go back and see and understand Word of knowledge. The purpose of the gift of the word of knowledge. Primarily, aside from supplying informations, is to build the faith and the conviction of the recipients. If I can reach into an information in your life and supply you an information, that might be useful in helping you interpret your today it can build your faith now notice that the, of the word of knowledge and prophecy works peri pursue in fact many people mistaking this gift half of what people call prophecy is the manifestation of the word of knowledge the word of knowledge only deals with past events and present events when it becomes futuristic that's prophecy past events present events Two examples very quickly in John chapter 1 you read from verse 45 to the last verse 51 John chapter 1 the Bible tells us about a man called Nathaniel are we together Nathaniel was beckoned by Philip that Jesus they had met the Messiah that was prophesied and Nathaniel made a very sarcastic statement Nathaniel said can anything good come out of Nazareth while all that conversation was happening Jesus was somewhere watching them. Then Nathaniel comes and Jesus sees Nathaniel. Here's what Jesus said. An Israelite indeed in whom there is guile. And Nathaniel saw him. I said, uh-uh, you mean you know me? And he said, Nathaniel, while you were under the tree insulting me, I saw you. <gasps> Nathaniel was amazed. Immediately, an attestation, this is the Christ, truly, the son of the living God. And then he said, Nathaniel, just because I gave you this, you were stunned. You are going to see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending. Remember when Jesus was with the Samaritan woman at the well. That woman had the potential to bring a lot of people to hear and listen to Jesus. Preparing them for what would happen at redemption. But there needed to be an access point. The woman had to be convicted. And then Jesus came to her. And they started a conversation about water. And then Jesus looks at her and says to her madam you have five husbands past the sixth one that you are with now is not your husband and she looks she said i perceive you are a prophet 
and then he began to talk to her the bible says she left her water pot there ran to the city and said all of you come come and see a man he didn't say come and see a preacher come and see a man that manifested a gift that astonished me come come see a man that has told me what i've done and when the people came and listened to jesus here was their testimony we now believe not because of what you have said. We have had that encounter by ourselves. The word of knowledge, if used in accordance with the word, is powerful. I have watched people's faith jump, leap, just because a communication, one word was given to them by the Spirit. Do you know, let me tell you this. Never fight the gifts of the Spirit. It may be abused. That's why we are balancing it. But do not ever fight it the encouragement that happens to your faith when a true man of God gives you a genuine word of knowledge not a general guesswork that you know this is not edifying there are words of knowledge that are not blessing are we together if I look at you and say you have pain all over your body the probability is yes something must be paining you somewhere so that's not powerful enough to convict you but when I look at you and say Pastor Alpha while you were eating yam from home before coming and this and that and that and that and i talk to you ah then something happens to your faith and all of a sudden you look and you are like my the god who can see me is the one who is telling me now by this time tomorrow you will be foolish to doubt him are we together now the word of knowledge listen listen let me have your attention the word of knowledge is a powerful instrument of building faith have you gone to a place where you see people being sarcastic and nasty and lousy and insulting the cynical people and then one really strong accurate powerful well delivered word of knowledge and all of a sudden you see everybody wipe sleep and you say lift up your hand and everybody is lifting and open the unbelief in our world require the gifts of the spirit to tame doubt and release the power of God to people I remember betting with a woman the gender of her child and I told her she argued it was a female I said if it's a male you will make pepper soup for me if it's a female, I don't know how to make pepper soup, so I will give you the financial equipment. I started dancing. I said, hey, somebody is going to make pepper soup for me. <laughs> what a free way of earning a living. <laughs> Imagine what happens to your stubborn loved ones. You know, we have almost every family has, for whatever reason, we have people around us who the devil is trying to snatch you pray in tongues they shout they talk nonsense i want to go to the house of god no 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 and then one day god just lands in a way and you commute not not for self-aggrandizement you speak a powerful word to your father and say sir the lord told me to tell you while you were at the bank trying to collect that money it was remember that your argument with that woman her name was stella Usually they will act as if you are lying and then later they will call you and say, who told you? Let me tell you, the human spirit can never resist the supernatural. Our pride can claim it doesn't matter. It's a lie. It's a lie. If you, if you encounter the word of knowledge, whether you repent or not, you can't sleep that night for sure. Ah, ah. He called my name and said this and said that. I think where it was in Joss, if you can remember, when Joss ministering um, some, I think one of the polytechnics, and then while I was ministering, the Holy Ghost ministered to me that there was a young man who was doubting, you know, you know, these are people where you know, doubting, doubting, how are we sure? Remember this story? And I said, There is a young man now, this is what you are thinking to yourself, you are doubting. And this is what is wrong with you. God will heal you now. When that guy came out, even me, when you see him, you know it had to be God that brought him out. Guy just came out dragging and said, honestly, he was standing there doubting this thing. I was like magic. Brothers and sisters, our shout is too much. Let the gift help us. Our 
our our begging is too much let the god brought these gifts to make the gospel superior the, the way we communicate this thing we are the mercy of people's wills we beg we beg you know everybody oh yeah lift your hand now is jesus not here my jesus and everybody is looking at you where is he and you are negotiating with them no the bible says that when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power if you are a prophet if someone gives you a word of knowledge it will impress you you won't say because i'm walking it it's like you are it's like you are a nurse when you are sick won't you turn for injection will you say because i'm a nurse? no another nurse will give you an injection and you will receive it so that you'll be well listen i want you to cry tonight and say lord my family needs salvation let this gift of the spirit work in my life pray one minute there are doubters in my community insulting and blaspheming the name of the Lord all that you would grant me access oh God the word of knowledge supernatural illumination insight into events explaining the mysteries of the lives of men helping men make sense of their lives hallelujah please sit down number three discerning of spirits i can spend the whole night here but let's see how god will help us what's discernment or we call it discernment or discerning of spirits please do not joke with this gift this gift of the spirit will be um, it will bail you out of many pains are we together what is discerning of spirits the gift of perception perception the ability to perceive spiritual impulses the ability to know the origin, the source, and the motivation behind the manifestation. The origin, the source, and even the motif behind the manifestation. It's called discernment. Whether activity is initiated and sustained by God whether it is an act of man's will or it is demonic you will never judge them by the physical results it will take discernment for you to know that which is of God brothers and sisters let me tell you and I submit to you with all humility it will be foolish to imagine everything happening in the body of Christ is of God no there are things that are orchestrated by demons there are doctrines that came from devils the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons there is such a doctrine as the doctrine of demons not the study of demons an understanding that was fabricated intentionally from the pit of hell to destroy the saints are we together you need discernment it is only through discernment that you can judge righteous judgment it's impossible for you to judge accurately if you lack discernment you will call good evil you will call evil good you will call saints devils you will call devils saints it takes discernment The realm of the spirit is not heaven the realm of the spirit is a spiritual environment the environment that birthed this realm the raw materials that have now crystallized as matter in this realm came from the realm of the spirit and anyone who has access to the realm of the spirit has a superior advantage whether through divination whether through the 
the Holy Spirit or any your spirit, any spirit that can access the realm of the spirit has an advantage over this realm. That's why Jesus said, I am the door. There are many other entrances, but he says, I'm the authorized entrance, meaning you can enter the house through a window. You can enter the house through somewhere. If I enter your house, if you step into your house and you find me and I crawled my way through a gutter somewhere, am I inside your house? Yes. Did I enter legally? No. The authorized way is the gate and the door. I've told you every power you see being manifested on earth is God's power. Every plus the power manifested by witchcraft. Once have I spoken, twice have we heard that all the only reason why it is called witchcraft is because there is an agenda behind that result and the whole spirit is not the spirit that authorized that possibility to find expression so there is the correctness of the result does not mean it is of God the correctness of the result is gauged by the spirit that sponsored it any activity in the realm of the spirit sponsored by the Holy Spirit has God's endorsement that means that it is possible this guy can be sick and as a herbalist I can conjure leaves based on a book my grandfather taught me correct and he says when you put lemon and add it with guava drink pour charcoal on it set it on fire in the night it can raise a kind of incense that will bring health to him and my grandfather will say that's how we lived healthy this guy can be sick i will conjure those things it will shock you right in your presence the way the guy will be healed you say i can't feel pain again he said that's it and he'll go and bring someone else now if i come as a man of god and i say wow we are brothers we are not brothers we are not brothers we are not brothers are we together no we are not brothers brothers are those from the same father and mother or at least father correct we can be brothers you see because the spirit one time i was ministering to a lady and they took her somewhere in zaria here and she she described a very nasty experience that she had she said when she went there one of the things that happened to her was that they will burn you will drop your money not honorarium there's an exact amount that you drop once you drop the man you know the whatever it is will now call certain names cajole you know read from book slates and all kinds of things and the moment they say it a spirit would tell that man um whatever spirit influence and then all of a sudden you know how it happens when people manifest the, the victim now will start shaking, shaking, and before you know it, the spirit will start speaking. Now, here's the interesting point. After all the conversation with the spirit, you now ask Moya, why did you come? Maybe they annoyed me or I didn't eat. You know how spirits talk. They are so dull. I have not, not eaten. And you people are eating in this land. And we are here hungry. And then, instead of casting out the devils, because they cannot cast out the devils, they do what we call occultic pacifism. You pacify by an atonement. You see that? So you, it's the spirit that will tell you what it will eat. So the spirit will say, one black goat. You say, oh, that's it. You too, all of you had. It's not me that wants to eat the goat. And then they bring the goat. And the only thing the man burns is the legs and the head. <laughs> Who will not burn that part? And settle down with the real part of the goat and say, look, he that serves in the altar should, should eat from the altar. And then when I looked at the lady in my mind, I said, what is, what is all this thing now? And you know, before I would talk, all of a sudden, that spirit just started manifesting. And I said, honestly, I don't have all this time. Please, I'm tired. Just live in the name of Jesus Christ. And that was the end of it. When the lady got up, her mother was surprised. And watch this. Because that, this thing, you will go for many days. It's not like you will go once. If you don't complete the, uh, the the program the demon gave it can backfire and kill everybody you know how it happens and all of that let me tell you all that is nonsense I repeat nonsense absolute nonsense now, there is a name oh, that was given to believers there is a name there is a name it says in my name it didn't say the mentioning of it 
you can shout Jesus stay forever. And like the sons of Skiba, it will, demons will pound on you like many people talk. It's not about pronunciation. There is a guy, there's one guy that committed a crime recently. His name is Jesus. I'm a, one, one of these funny guys. Now, not, it, not the footballer I was reading. I said, Jesus, can you imagine that guy? So you stand and shout. And while you are shouting, Jesus, Jesus, no. It is not in the pronunciation. It's in the revelation. The miracle is in your understanding. That's why Jesus looked at them and said, go. One of the standard proofs of spiritual maturity is discernment. You cannot say you are matured in the spirit if this gift is not working in your life. Brothers and sisters, I submit to you and I join the many loving men of God around the world and together we take responsibility for not helping the body of Christ mature. We have produced miracles. We have produced signs and wonders. But the average believer is not mature at all we do not understand the speakings of the spirit we do not know how to interpret spiritual things we are dull of hearing no ears that hear no eyes that see but god is helping us in jesus name there are many other texts that talk about discernment the bible says in hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 let me give it to you please just write very quickly hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 the bible says that strong meat is for those who are of full age who by reason of use have learned to exercise their senses to discern between good and evil in acts chapter 16 from verse 16 to 18 when you read acts 16 from verse 16 to 18 paul came into a city and there was a young lady the bible called her a damsel he said that this lady had the spirit of divination and some business people saw her and saw the potentials in her and they negotiated she would give word of knowledge and prophecy and she would bring money and the bible says they made much gain with it and then one time she saw paul preaching and here's what she said that's why you need discernment these are the holy men of god they have come to show us the way of righteousness let me tell you what many of us will do say wow you mean how long have you been in ministry I never knew that. I mean, you are so generous. You don't know me. You're already talking about me. So let's walk together. Can we walk? Come to my pulpit on Sunday. Even if it's a Saturday night. Listen, please. Hallow your altar. Don't bring anybody just because you saw gifts. Let there be a system of vetting for the sake of the sheep. Are we together? These are the men. The first day Paul kept quiet. Second day, the Bible says she kept doing it. One time Paul looked and said, wow, prophesying, word of knowledge. And Paul just switched in the realm of the spirit and saw a demon manipulating and said, look, hurry up, let's, we must make gate to them. Paul casted that demon. You know, they beat Paul because of it. The rest is history. The people were angry because they knew that business was closed for them. As soon as the lady was delivered, she got up. Madam, are you seeing nothing? I'm not seeing anything again. Lord give us discernment first Kings chapter 3 verse 16 to 28 first Kings chapter 3 verse 16 to 28 we don't have the time but let me give you that story I wanted to use it as the text the classic text to explain discernment for you the Bible says that God gave Solomon an understanding heart and his first test was two harlots who came before him praise God the Bible says that those, all of them had, you know, they had a child each. And then the Bible says, whilst they were sleeping, one slept on her child. I don't know what kind of sleep that was. And suffocated the child to death. Then she got up in the middle of the night, shook her child and found out her child was dead. And quietly replaced the child. The next day when they got up, there was, there was an issue. The woman wanted to breastfeed her child and noticed that the child was dead but she looked well and said no this is not my child off they went to solomon and when they got there the woman who swapped the child started you know they started advocating and said this and that and that and solomon looked that was a serious situation now notice this is what i want to teach you notice how solomon manifested discernment the first thing he did was he said bring the sword that's the word of god go 
and get me the sword. This confusion requires the word of God that is able to cut asunder and divide between bone and marrow. That knife was a similitude of the sword of the spirit. Discernment is impossible if you do not understand the character of God. Not just the word of God. You must know what God can do and what he cannot do. The operation of any spirit must be consistent with the general operation of God. Such that even if you do not find a scripture for it, it still must be consistent verbatim. And so when they brought the sword, he said, bring the child. Bring the issue of contention. This is how we are going to discern. We are going to use the word of God to divide that issue. And immediately he lifted the sword. The sword was not for the child. It was for their hearts. The woman, the woman whose child was, like the Bible says, can a mother forget her suckling child? I said, no, no, please. If it's issue of death now, hand it over. And the other woman was saying, you see, I'm right. And Solomon said, I've gotten my answer. Madam, give this woman her child. Go and bury your own child. Discern. Let me tell you something. In this our world, somebody can steal a laptop and sell that laptop and wear a suit and swear and say, me? Do I look like somebody who can steal a laptop? You need discernment. You can see somebody that looks like a thief truly. Looks like a thief, scattered, disorganized. But he may be one of the most honest persons in your life. Is that true? Policemen need this our our because the number of people in prison today that are not supposed to be there is only god that will help you can look at me now never believe that i'll steal a laptop what for but what if i have a spirit that makes me steal it are we together now we have blamed innocent people they carry money in your house and you come no discernment you call everybody and a smart young chap who is the thief about to go for lectures and one guy just comes out He's, he may not be born again but he doesn't steal and you look at him and say come are you going to just bring this money out now or they will arrest you and he say i'm not the one you need discernment if you do not have discernment you are going to destroy your leadership because the world is full of deception are we together someone can be killing you and look at you and smile while you are dying while they are piercing you that's the person who said don't promote this person this person is not from this state and you come and meet him and say sir my portion is stretching say my son ha ah, oh yeah sit down what did you discuss with them and they went visit this fool but with discernment as soon as you sit down something in your spirit you may not see a vision but something refuses to agree Something just says, uh uh. So, have you ever wanted to do something? Maybe you wanted to do business with somebody, or you wanted to do a discussion, or you were just saying, We are going to be partners, and you could not sleep in the night. Not fear, I'm not talking of fear. For, and everything, physically speaking, was correct. Have you ever made up your mind that you are going to ask a lady out? You prayed, you fasted, you were happy on that day. After you talk in and put your tie, your spirit, your, your peace ceased. Ah. He said, I mean, I, I look forward to this time. Let me tell you why many people land into trouble. We numb those things and continue and continue. You were about to travel, but nothing in your spirit, not fear. And you ignored it. Discernment is powerful. Discernment is powerful. But let me tell you something. No matter, most people train their discernment just by prayer. They never study the word. That's why they get into confusion. Are we together? If all you do is pray and pray and pray and pray, your eyes will be open to the realm of the spirit, but your capacity to interpret the impulses will be wrong. That's why you will give false visions. You will give false interpretations. You will see a nice lady. Come darling. You will see a nice lady like this lady now. And you just sense something demonic in her. And because you do not have the word to understand. 
you just look and say, Kai, I stood near this lady and I had some, this lady must be a witch. No, sir, she's not a witch. You are not a good Bible student. You are a prayer warrior, but you do not understand the word. And you are using error to now taint this lady and call her a witch. Are we together now? Let's be very careful. We have, we have destroyed people's lives. Pastors have used inaccurate discernment alongside other gifts to scatter marriages. Hello? We have called everybody witch. You just turn and you look at a lady like this. You say, why are you looking fine like this? You are a witch. No, you are not a witch. Pray for two of them and see who, who gets delivered. We must be careful. Discernment is needed in our day today. Do you know prophets cried in the Bible when things happened and they did not see it or, or perceive it. They said, Lord, why did you hide this from me? May God build us to a point where nothing passes above you without your spirit receiving the seed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Or some of us have those impulses but we do not know how to interpret it and respond to it. You've been having an impulse like death is around the corner but you didn't know what to do until somebody died and said yeah so this is what i've been feeling those impulses are not caused by demons it is the holy spirit listen to my message spiritual perception the holy spirit is attempting to communicate to you if you do not have the word of god your dreams will be corrupted hello because dreams and visions are also an extension of discernment am i blessing you one of the most deceptive tools that Satan is using now, I think in the last four or five years, has been aberrated dreams and visions. God would make your destiny, the devil would try to use the face of your destiny helper to chase you in a dream. You stand up and bind him for two hours, and reject him in the physical, and remain poor and broke forever. We have to be careful. Satan has made families fight today. By using the faces of mothers and fathers and you just say, I saw my mother with a knife. I say, I don't care. She will die. Be careful. Be careful. Listen, our only basis for escaping error is the word of God. Please, you have to believe what I'm saying. The study of scripture is important. It gives us an insight into how God works so we can judge from that lens. There are many dreams when you get up, you are just supposed to say nonsense. Blast in tongues for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour, and that ends it. But some of us document everything. Plus, wicked dreams from the pit of hell, we document it. And then when you are mentoring somebody one day, you say, these are my book of dreams, read it. And then the guy reads it and says, wow, strange creatures. I said, it's the realm of the spirit, just keep reading. You see, let me tell you, don't laugh. I'm saying this because there are people now who are not even sure of anything again. Is that true? Satan can manipulate dreams. One brother can have a dream and see ten sisters. He saw one. When he was praying about her, he saw another. You, you see confusion? I'm not saying he's a bad brother. But now you've seen ten ladies. You are now confused. So even if somebody comes to prophesy and say, it's, it's um, sister seven that you saw number seven you say what of two i first saw one before seven and confusion what of people who marry and have dreams and see someone who is not their husband and get up and say that means i made a mistake i knew it i knew that this look you are married you are married there is grace to live there is grace to work it out it is this lack of thing that can make a man who has been with a woman for 20 years she gave you children, all of a sudden you made money and then you go and meet and, and it's usually us, prophets and apostles. You come and meet us and then we just conjure all kinds of stories. The man goes back home and drives the wife. Say discernment. Say it again, discernment. You need discernment. You need discernment to know who to help. Someone comes to lie down in your room all through that night. Strange occurrences happen. It's, it's not a devil, but he needs help. Are we together? People bring atmospheres. 
discernment helps you to pick the impulses of people sometimes as I minister to people that's how I know they are, they are in trouble they may come out for something else but as I stand there are all kinds of things happening and I know that something is wrong something is wrong when you train yourself you can discern the presence of angels you will not see them but you can describe them it's a mystery you will know not just that they are angels but what kind of angels and their operation you can know their direction are you see if now you see let me tell you if your spirit is not trained to understand this you will always think that the people who are saying it are lying and there are people who are lying are we together but you can discern it you can know you can train yourself in a room by the time you are worshiping and the shekinah of god comes not just by your shaking you know i'm not alone this is zion now this room has changed you that's how you discern anointings as a man of god and you don't use anointing like a general purpose machine gun you won't be effective in ministry like that because you will be ministering an area you sense the anointing but you could not discern what kind of anointing and to what degree so we can be ministering here now and all of a sudden the healing anointing now begins to come if you do not have that discernment you can be saying something else and you see the anointing just like the Holy Spirit is very sensitive when the anointing comes into a place and it's not acknowledged and channeled by faith for operation it will be unfruitful as powerful as it is nothing works without faith even the anointing everyone say discernment think of how many things that have happened in our lives because we lack discernment we need to cry for discernment we need to cry for discernment can we pray in one minute say lord discernment grant discernment to discern good and evil to discern opportunities to discern helpers to discern enemies, to discern doors, to discern manipulations of demons over my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need discernment. I think it was in Koinonia here one time after a very hot miracle service. The very next day, some guys called a lady. They called the lady and said she won. Uh, I, I, I don't, I can't remember the amount, but a very huge amount. You know, let's assume maybe one million or five million, and told her you won it. Make sure you don't tell anybody. Quietly find your way to the front of. I, I think it was um, maybe first bank or somewhere like that, and they met that lady there. The rest is history. The next thing. That lady found herself in Kaduna in a building. One of our ladies, she's no longer here. Found herself in Kaduna. They took her somewhere in your Kaduna. One place that looks like a warehouse. It was as if her eyes, I don't know how to, you, you get what I'm saying. As if you are, you, are, you are awake, but it's as if they did something to your eyes. And all of a sudden, her, it's like her eyes, she came back to herself and she called me. I said, where are you? And she said, I'm so, 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 please. I said, hey, can you walk out and see a bike there? I said, take a bike immediately. Straight. I told her, take a bike straight to Kao. No matter how much, just arrive there first. I was waiting for that lady until she arrived. And I said, what happened to you? She said, honestly, she doesn't know. I remember one thief that Pastor Jakes caught in. I think Pastor Jakes was going to Sabo or something. And then the guy was, you know, some of them use charm abracadabra they sit down and they do something they, they don't put their hand there they can just hang it around and your money follows them from today that devil that comes near you the, the fire and the discernment you will, you will know and you will hold the hand and tell him look not everybody is a normal human being there are people who are men plus possibilities men plus possibilities hallelujah can we touch on one more gift let's touch on diverse kinds of tongues hmm.
How many have I done? One, two, three. Let's do four. We can continue next week because there's something I want to talk about that is hot in my spirit. I was preparing it while I was. Let's just talk about tongues. The Bible tells us that there are diverse kinds of tongues. Everybody say diverse kinds of tongues. When the Bible says diverse, that means that there are different kinds of tongues. Probably, I think one of the greatest conflicts between and thank God for great men of God like Reverend Tende who wrote a book. I think it was a book particularly tailor-made to the northern church to help most every Christian pray in tongues. Wonderful text, you can get it and read it. It was an attempt to give a, a very solid 21st century biblical foundation because probably one of the greatest points of conflict between the Pentecostal charismatic and the orthodox is this dividing line of this subject of tongues. Is that true? Many of us come from backgrounds and families where people have different kinds of responses. Some of us, even as we are now, probably we are still, there's an internal war over the issue of tongues. The Bible talks of diverse kinds of tongues. And in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul gives us a little, he opened it more to us. He says, though I speak with tongues of men and tongues of angels, tongues of men refer to any earthly language, the language understood by men, used by inhabitants upon the earth. The tongues of angels refer to supernatural communications, not just languages used by angels, angelios, messengers, any being that hails from the realm of the spirit, communicating a language that is not known to men is called the tongues of angel. It was an ancient way of communicating spiritual things. The Bible, and theologically speaking, identifies, broadly speaking, three kinds of tongues. Number one is what we call tongues for personal edification and growth. You may want to write it down. Maybe you will help somebody with it. Tongues for personal edification and growth. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2. The Bible speaks there. He says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but to God not unto men but to God so there is tongues that is for personal edification and growth there's tongues that the Bible says that is a sign to unbelievers are we together as was the case in Acts chapter 2 when you read from verse 4 to 12 the day of Pentecost the Bible says that the people were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues. And among the many variations of tongues, they were communicating earthly languages. Are we together? And most of the people came and heard them. Let's go to verse 6. Just give us verse 6 and let's, let's look at what. It says, and when the sound of God, the multitudes came together and they were confused. Because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Can you imagine? Almost every language there was represented. Someone was communicating it. Now, the communicators did not even know what language they were speaking. But the listeners, they were not just speaking a language in the spirit and interpreting it. They were communicating a language they never learned. Hallelujah. A sign to unbelievers. History is full of people who have done that. It happened to Kenneth E. Hagin. It happened to R.W. Shambach of Blessed Memories. People who would go to certain lands to preach and there would be no interpreter. And the power of God would fall on them. And they would preach in Chinese fluently for that period of time. Afterwards, everything goes down. So there is tongues as a sign to unbelievers. Then number three, there is tongues as a ministry gift. Tongues as a ministry gift for the edification of the body tongues as a ministry gift for the edification of the body first corinthians chapter 14 when you read from verse 4 and 5 5 particularly the bible talks to us about that tongues very important it says i wish you all spoke with tongues but even more that you should prophesy he says, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues. 
unless that means this is the condition for them to become equal we are coming there that the one prophesies is greater than the one who manifests these kinds of tongues unless that means the moment there is an interpreter what he's speaking and the interpretation will equal prophecy are we together now yes now let me show you where the confusion is before we talk about diverse kinds of tongues give us verse 29 and 30 this is where many people have erroneously carved out a basis for confusion 12 29 corinthians first corinthians 12 12 29 and 30 are all apostles what's the answer no are all prophets no are all teachers no are all workers of miracles no watch this now do all have gifts of healing no here's where many of our dear wonderful men and women of god who are well-meaning love the lord but have inaccurate understanding of the word of god this is where the confusion has come it says do all speak with tongues now look at what context of tongues the next verse do all interpret so he's talking about tongues as a ministry gift not tongues as for your personal edification are we together now not everybody will manifest the gift of diverse kinds of tongues what is it really the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is a supernatural communication listen prophecy in an unknown, unknown an unknown language be it heavenly or earthly prophecy in an unknown language you are communicating a word from the lord to the people of god but it is in a language that is not known by you the speaker and most most often than not by the listeners when you communicate a word from the lord that is supposed to edify the people are we together now but it's just that it came in a language that is not known by you the speaker nor the listeners there must be the spirit of god must move upon you the speaker or another person to break down that spiritual message you brought so that the listeners can hear and apply their faith to it and receive so when i begin to say everybody pray in tongues there are a number of people who have problem with it and say no it's not in the bible it, it was there in the day of pentecost the church in corinth were manifesting it in fact let me tell you this paul himself made a very profound statement and he said i thank my god i pray in tongues more than ye all when you read first corinthians 14 verse 18 and then you read verse 39 first corinthians 14 verse 18 and then verse 39 he says i thank my god i speak with tongues more than you all paul is saying look 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 i pray in tongues more than ye all not just that i i interpret all of this see that it is important please listen to me if you are here seated maybe you are just coming today inside or outside and you have shortchanged yourself because you have probably been sincerely but wrongly indoctrinated that praying in tongues is a gift that is for a few people the person who communicated that is not in error he was only incomplete is that true what kind of tongues if he means the gift of diverse kinds of tongues he's correct it's not for everybody the bible says that and where that gift is manifested it is only beneficial to the body if there is an interpreter the individual who communicated it or another person but the Bible says the tongues for edification does not need interpretation because not speaking to men, we are speaking to God. 14 verse 2. See that? Are we together now? Have you gotten that clearly? So this is very, very important. You are here and you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. I can begin to give you a rundown of several things you are missing. When the ministry was a lot smaller, I used to do that by myself. Then Pastor Jakes came, joined, and Jimmy too used to join. And now the ministry is, is so large. We've handed everything to the prayer department. And boy, are they doing a great job. If you are here, you are not filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of praying in tongues. I want you to know that Tuesday is a wonderful opportunity for you. Come, whether or not it's their, their baptism, you know, a prayer. You just come and make sure that they can minister to you hallelujah let me stop here and talk on words 
we will take from interpretation of tongues and, and the rest because next week, please don't mix next week, it will be a very great impartation. The Lord instructed me to activate these gifts. But I want to talk on words. The Holy Spirit, while I was getting ready to go and take my bath, I was just, you know, praying a little. And then the Holy Spirit began to minister to me. The anointing of the Spirit just came strong upon me. And the Lord told me that I should speak to people about words. Write this down. Words are God's instrument of creation words next week when i teach you the I, we finish the vocal gifts and the power gifts we'll talk some more but it's important for you to know words are god's instrument of creation and one classic proof of spiritual growth and maturity is the ability to speak consistent with the word of god listen carefully the ability for your communications and your speakings to always without fail be in line with the word of God now sometimes in an attempt to press into deeper dimensions of God listen carefully and I must admit this to you you know sometimes as we press towards superior dimensions in the spirit which is valuable we tend to trivialize some of these foundational truths and look at them as though they are basic they are for children at every level of your work with God, your words will be the programmers of your destiny. Write it down. Your words are the programmers of your destiny. You don't talk anyhow, speak antichrist. You must culture your words by the word of God. You must ensure that your communication is building your life and your destiny. Many of us have destroyed our lives because we have allowed our words. Let me show you a few scriptures that will really challenge you. Can I give you some verses about words that have really, really blessed me? I tried to write the five or six most powerful scriptures I have found about words. And I will give it to you. Ready? Media, please help us. If we can project them, they will be great. Um, we we'll need some speed here so that we can pray number one john 6 63 john 6 63 the words that i speak unto you jesus is speaking he says it is the spirit that quickeneth listen the flesh profited nothing the words that i speak unto you they are not just sounds that enter your ears they are spirit and life so while you are saying it is not for people like us we are the nobodies you are sending spirits you are sending instruments of creation you are sending messengers into your future programming war programming tragedies for you words are powerful god created the universe through words the only thing god did not create through words is man and he said it is just that he added with his hand again every other thing god said god saw god said god saw Number two, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. And then we'll go to Matthew 12, 37. Let me give us a verse ahead. Media, please give us quickly. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4 and then Matthew 12, 37. It says, where the word of a king is, these are the scriptures that have blessed me and shaped my understanding of the power of the spoken word. Where the word of a king is, there is what? Power except you are not a king but if you are a king and the bible says five verse ten of revelations don't go there just write it it says that we have been made unto our god kings and priests a kingdom of priests and we shall reign. how do we reign remember i've taught you dominion mandate one of the ways that we legislate is through the power the our legislature through words for where the word of joshua selman is there is power where the word of anybody in koinonia who has an understanding that means if i see things happening in my life and i don't like what is the first thing to do please talk to me what is the first thing to do listen listen don't let anybody make you feel these things are basic no you didn't create the realm of the spirit you came from there anybody that is born and says i will not eat food the regular way i want to live my own way 
except you have caught the revelation of being a breatharian just know that you are going to die and die you will die and you will shrink and die like somalian children the authorized way is that you continue to eat where the word of a king is there is power matthew chapter 12 and verse 37 for by thy words thou shalt be justified like a court of law there is a spiritual court right the realm of the spirit works on a legal basis he said for by thy words as easy as salvation is it takes words to impart the life of christ to you the word is near thee even in thy heart and in thy mouth the word of faith that we preach right romans 10 verse 8 to 10 for by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned so when you are condemned who condemned you it's not really that your neighbor no no you only attracted to your life what your words made i refuse to speak negative about myself i refuse it you will never hear me say anything sarcastic about myself I love myself. Uh, I think it was school of ministry students I was teaching and I was telling them that these people that hang themselves, it has been a wonder for me for many years. Even if I were not born again, I won't hang myself. No. I love myself passionately. Hang myself? No. I may quarrel myself. I may challenge my body to hang, to go and stand on a rope and just tie myself? No. By your words, you are justified. By your words, you are condemned. Isaiah 43 verse 26 then we go to numbers 14 28 and then just two more and we're done I just felt like speaking to us about words by the Spirit of God because many believers are becoming careless we speak anyhow and we don't mind and we keep programming things that destroy us and then we say it doesn't matter it does matter brothers and sisters everybody who worried everybody who strives for mastery must do so lawfully we don't invent the rules we find them out it's an ancient part and we walk in it isaiah 43 and verse 26 he says the b part he said declare thou that thou mayest be justified how do you justify yourself so how does the sick justify himself i'm healed in the name of jesus yes there might be pains but i decree and declare by his stripes I am healed now when you are saying this you see a lot of emojis look at you and say you are still a baby Christian until one day as matured as you think you are the devil is not a fool he will just allow pride to reach the highest point and sweep you one day in a way that you won't believe I speak over my life I speak over koinonia koinonia is planted Bible says they that be planted in the house of the Lord they shall flourish in the courts of our God even in old age, he said they shall be fat and flourishing. Many of us used to do it before. But now that we are becoming men of God, we are throwing it away. Get back. It is the childlike principle that has lifted ordinary people to become mighty. If I tell you I don't speak the word, I will be lying. I speak the word. Shabakatulia. Joshua Selman, you are blessed. You are blessed. I have a little blackboard with scriptures. I recite those scriptures when I'm praying and God did extraordinary things through the hands of Joshua Selman so that handkerchiefs and aprons you don't wait till you see the result it is the words that command the results in the name of Jesus I declare wealth and riches are in my house durable riches I decree and declare I shall not die I'm exempted from the arrows that fly by day the noisome pestilence People like Pastor Chris who say, keep, how, how does he say it? I, 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 keep, thank you. Keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Do it, oh. Do it like that. That's how it works. Believe me, that's how it works. You don't speak once and keep quiet. Listen, if I speak and I say in the name of Jesus, any spirit oppressing anybody and people are outside there, why can I not speak and say in the name of Jesus, everywhere my destiny helper is? By the favor of God come that you saw it in the Bible is no guarantee that it will happen in your life you must speak 
Speaking is so important to the point that they had to shut the mouth of Zechariah so that he would not speak nonsense. If he had spoken, he would have altered John the Baptist's destiny. Numbers 14, 28. Very interesting scripture. I found this scripture during a retreat. Numbers 14, 28. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, not as you desire quietly, as you have spoken in my ears. Question, where was the ears when you were speaking? Did the ears come near your mouth? So while you were blasting and saying, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, I decree and declare, oh grave, where is your sting? Oh death, where is this and that? And you are prophesying and you are speaking and you are saying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have a job. The Lord grants me favor. I may not have an uncle. I may not have an auntie, but in the name of Jesus, God raise helpers. The Bible says God is bringing his ears down and is hearing. He says, as I, you have spoken in my ears, so will do not to your neighbor, to you, to you, to you. Isaiah 44 verse 26 Isaiah 44 verse 26 Isaiah 44 verse 26 talking about the Lord it says he that confirmeth the word of his servant confirm meaning you speak and go let me tell you something and performeth the counsel of his messengers I want to teach you something about faith. Look up. Get any of my teachings on faith. Let me teach you something about faith. You see, Pastor come. Satan has lived very long in this realm. Believers, hear me. Let me speak to you. Satan has lived very long in this realm. And he understands that man, out of the assistance of the spirit, has one limitation. It's called our humanity. And part of the components of our humanity is that we can be wary. Is that true? Remember the Bible says the keeper of Israel, you know, doesn't sleep, doesn't slumber. But men sleep and they can slumber. Are we together? So this is what he does. Satan knows that your eyes, your optical eyes, your ears, all of these things control your perceptions, hence your convictions. And so what he does is he, he makes sure that perpetually before you is an awareness of your limitation are you hear what i'm saying now listen to me so while you are praying in the middle of hot prayer the devil just comes in and says where's the husband and you would think it will enter you because you are in the spirit it will just enter you and you say oh god am i not a beautiful lady what is all this you see he has brought you back to his realm the bible says to walk in the spirit let me tell you what to do when that happens that's a sign that your, a reaction is happening in the spirit. Every time you make such a proposition, please help that lady. That is a sign that something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Are we together? I remember the time when God showed me the vision of Koinonia. We're about to start. I saw overflows. Remember? I, I said I saw people coming from other cities, other places. That was what I saw. As at that time, they had not even expanded CGC. I remember when I was praying and I was going to go and announce it. While I was praying, 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 there came that voice of doubt again. Don't think it doesn't happen to me. No. Most people will lie to you and say it doesn't happen. It's a lie. It happens to everybody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That while you are praying and the devil says you now want to disgrace yourself and God, you have not even gotten a venue they have not given you anything just because God showed you CGC you now want to make a stupid statement but the Bible says the spirit of faith has a character it speaks it doesn't wish and hide no 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 it speaks the spirit of faith it speaks it speaks oh let me let me play it safe when, it, when the answer comes so that I won't be embarrassed question whoever takes the glory should take the shame every time you speak you put pressure on god's integrity lord i take your word and i shout it let them hear 
so that if it does not happen they, no 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 I can't give you the glory and take the shame many of us here we have been threatened by our physical circumstances into silence let the redeemed of the Lord not we so say so say so I say it all the time I stand before my mirror Joshua Selman you are anointed you are rising from glory to glory superior dimensions of the anointing the favor of God is upon you sometimes I'm listening to koinonia message and while apostle is prophesying I'm there in my house kneeling down and listening because there are two different people I tell you and I listen I listen to apostles message I listen to his message more than many of you here I can sit down and claim because I'm the one ministering and never be blessed from it there is no koinonia message I've not listened to not for clarity and administration God is my witness I stand before him in your presence lift up your hands and I'm on my knees sometimes I play miracle service messages all while I sleep and I have strange encounters don't think this thing we're just faking it you don't walk this thing it will never work God is not a herbalist are we together sometimes I carry maybe Benny Hinn message or something I'm playing and in the sleep it continues mysterious encounters when you wake up the devil will say pastor alpha you have been prophesying for two weeks you to reason and you say no sir this is what many of us do god but it's true now see if you if you don't stop getting embarrassed by the absence of your result you will never walk by faith are you hearing what i'm saying this shame shame believers hear me I'm speaking to you by the spirit this shame consciousness of looking like a fool while awaiting your manifestation every miracle you see will risk taken by faith Lord I thank you nations are coming this ministry is rising oh you are talking too much thank God I'm not talking to you Lord you who I'm talking to you know me I, come on please don't go and shout in somebody's house it's not your house that's why the bible said close your door enter your room close your door talk to your father there may not be money now but in the name of jesus father i'm a tither i'm a giver in the name of jesus i prophesy and while you are speaking the holy ghost just says dance for one hour aha uh aha -huh. uh -huh. the word has come and you put one hot Igbo high praise hot high praise you may not know how to sing well she can sing for you you know those 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 wonderful Igbo sisters and you are dancing apostle I can't dance dance anyhow it's an instruction you dance like David dance and while you are dancing all of a sudden in that foolishness of faith the God I serve, who takes the weak things, the foolish things, is working a miracle. You see, let me tell you this. Spiritual people must be childlike, not childish, childlike. We are too matured for results. All this big manism in the presence of God. No, sir. Are we together? Yes. You must speak. You get up and you have a bad dream. You are lying down and one spirit comes to sleep with you and oppress you and you get up and you say Kai this thing has happened again no sir in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that I've been raised with Christ and the devil says didn't the spirit know while you're there just keep it keep at it Satan is a coward when he looks at let me tell you something when you are bold enough you will resist him and I promise you he will flee is God speaking to us we have been wasting words the words that are supposed to be used for edification we use that energy for gossip for backbiting for speaking words of unbelief pastor Alpha, that 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 prayer we prayed that time Shemi, you prayed it too let's be honest uh, not that I'm saying there's no faith to that's not what I'm saying but is it really working 
just don't you don't need to let nobody know just whisper it to me that's unbelief that thing you did is unbelief because you are trying to play games with god look if you are in this thing enter it and stay there and die in it if you are not in it then don't fake it i'm a talking spirit truly i talk not talkativeness reduce half of the time we use jumping around and talking stories and talking nonsense go back to the secret place Kalabota Skaliadash. this family is a family of peace this is my husband this is my wife we love ourselves no demon from anywhere is coming to scatter us you call your child daddy thinks you carry him say no 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 i'm a priest now this is not daddy bring your head let him just be playing around the head or cry leave, leave him there don't feel sorry for him pray you get up and walk around your house. Dr. Paul Enenche was saying something. They are, the Lord's garden that they are building now, he says almost every day he goes there to speak and build. Just the zinking of it, the, the roofing of that place is six million dollars. Six million dollars to a 70,000 capacity seater. It's not just ritual. He will go there quietly in the night at his level and status. Lord, you have given the instruction. Let those who will publish it come. The Lord gave the word. I pray over Koinonia. Lord, thank you. Financial help us. Don't just say favor is happening automatically. No. Lord, there are men and women who will bless me every service. I pray that prayer. I'll be honest with you. Lord, I am serving you in truth. And the Bible says, He that ministers to you in carnal things. Lord, I expect favor. I'm a receiver with thanksgiving. I receive grace. You have a troublesome tenant. Someone who is disturbing you and making life easy. Instead of fighting physically, I've taught you spiritual intelligence. Shakatabata. Lord, this woman is making life uncomfortable for my children. In the name of Jesus, I make decree. I'm a man of peace. I declare my borders are peaceful. Even God, who quickened the dead and collects, magnetizes, attracts things that be not as though they were. This is not positive confession. This is creation. 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 We are going to speak. Are you ready to speak? Please rise up on your feet. Let's close for tonight. Rise up on your feet. Brothers and sisters, I want you to believe these things that I teach you. These are the keys. These are the keys that produce the results we desire. These are the keys. I want you to lift your voice in one minute. Our time is gone. Just lift your voice and thank the Lord for this word you have received tonight. Bless you, Pastor. for your power, for your grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to open your mouth in one minute. I know we're teaching on the gifts, but let's start with words. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to make decrees. Don't let the devil tell you anything. Open your mouth. Don't be silent. Make decrees. It says, declare thou that he might be justified. Speak over the anointing in your life. Speak over your ministry. Are you prophesying? Speak over your marriage. Speak over your destiny helpers. Cancel every negative word over your life. Nullify the scorching tongues of men. Pronouncements, conclusions that have come by men. 
Mata koto soto pakata le katos. Ende koto soko kupia takata. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. My God, you anoint my head with oil. You anoint me with favor. You anoint me with grace. My cup runneth over. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. Koinonia rises as a shining light. Ever brighter, ever brighter to the perfect day. No weapon fashion against me. No weapon fashion against this ministry shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me shall fall in judgment. Declare, declare. I decree and declare. I am planted in the house of God. I flourish in the courts of my God. I am fat and flourishing. The abundance of the earth is delivered unto me. Everything works for my good. Everything works in my favor. Men arise to help me. Men arise to support what I represent. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord makes me a blessing. I remain a blessing. I remain a blessing in the name of Jesus. Rising ever brighter. Growing in the anointing. Growing in illumination. Ministry expanding on the left and on the right. In the name of Jesus Christ. The purposes of Christ being established through Koinonia. I decree and declare. All that God has given me is blessed. I and the children that God has given me, we are for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. I enjoy abundance. I enjoy supplies. Don't be tired. Don't let the devil deceive you that what you are saying is not sending a signal in the realm of the spirit. I'm fruitful on every side. In the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of revelation is upon me. I have understanding. I have understanding. I have the mind of Christ. The love of God is at work in me. It's my year of triumph. I prophesy thanks be to God who causes me to triumph. It's my year of triumph. In the name of Jesus Christ. No death. I have no business with death. In the name of Jesus Christ. I walk in dominion. I walk in grace. Hallelujah. I'm walking in power, I'm walking in miracles, I live a life of favor, I know who I am, I'm walking in power, it's my confession, walking in miracles, I live a life of favor, I know who I am, I'm walking in power, Walking in miracles, I live a life of favor. One more time. Hey, I'm walking in power. Walking in miracles, I live a life of favor. Just the voices. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know. One more time. I'm walking in power. Walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. Listen. Carry this attitude back. Don't allow those who speak and say you are talking, you are not serious. No worry. Thank God this race is personal. Do whatever you believe and leave me alone. If my talking is too childish and too, no problem, let me continue being foolish and talk my way into my destiny. Listen, hold on. Don't allow people, hear me. 
Hear me, Koinonia. Don't allow anybody emotionally blackmail you when you are practicing the word of God. Don't allow anybody make you feel, please, what is all this childish thing? This is how kings reign. This is how people legislate. I will never stop speaking. You see, listen, listen. It is not what you do that makes you succeed. It is how you do it. It's not doing certain things that make people succeed. I want to pray for you. I have learned in my little life that the anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The difference. Praise the Lord. I stretch my hands upon all of you right now as I speak. May the grace that lifts men come upon every one of you as I speak right now. Receive it right now. The grace that lifts people. There is an anointing that lifts a man. It's not trial and error. Let it come upon you right now. I open up the gates of cities, the gates of territories, and I speak in the name of Jesus. A level of grace. May your saxophone stop being an instrument. May it become a weapon from today. A weapon of healing. You and your entire team. Let it burn like fire in your spirit. Like fire upon your spirit. Never to be the same. You will sing with the sounds of the heavens. And everybody that hears that sound will know that your communications are of the spirit there is a grace that lifts men you can try you can struggle you can beg you can connect no. see every time listen every time you see consistent results regardless of the situation there is an anointing please lend this there is an anointing there is an anointing that translates men swallows up the weaknesses of people may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ God will give you wisdom let your ministry enter another dimension I pray for character for all of you. See, this is usually the problem. Listen, let me, I'm, I'm teaching, you are learning. The most important aspect of the anointing is the character to maintain it. Not the anointing. Because you see, the anointing is very charismatic. The most powerful ability of a man of God is self-control the ability to keep quiet even when you have what to say the ability to walk within the jurisdiction of the grace apportion there are many of we people we don't have self-control especially over an opportunity like this everybody now wants to show and you do not know where God has stopped and you want to continue to stretch it to show you are anointed and then you step out of the spirit and begin to walk in the flesh because some of you are here for this same anointing but you see the, it's not just the anointing believe me this is not an issue of prayer and fasting it's an issue of knowing God and understanding his ways 
God is only committed to backing what he instructed. If he did not direct you, he will not back you. Hallelujah. God bless you. John chapter 3 verse 16. Let's just look at scripture quickly. And then we'll pray. There is a lot that God wants to do tonight. These guys have already stared the anointing. And you see the thing with the anointing is once it's stared, it doesn't stop. It doesn't know whether it's miracle service or Easter. John chapter 3 verse 16. I'd like you all to be sensitive. The anointing has been stared up in this place. Many of you do not know what the staring of the anointing is. The moment your eye sees, there is a relationship between your heart and your eyes. So once your eye sees it, immediately your spirit is open. And the moment your spirit is open, the spirit of God starts moving. He doesn't care whether you are preached or not. Because that's his desire. Hallelujah. And usually, once the anointing starts moving, it's very difficult to contain it. Because the hearts of people are open. In the name of Jesus. I'm hearing the sound of thunder. I know this is not physical. I'm hearing a sound of thunder. Like lightning is coming upon people. Right now in the congregation. Why do I see this? It's like the sound of thunder. It's what I hear in my spirit. Hallelujah. Please pay attention. The meeting is on. I'm seeing ministering spirits. It's a class of angels. I'm seeing them walk inside and outside. Just let me do what is happening. Ministering spirits. There are not many times I see these kinds of angels. I'm seeing them walking inside and outside. Ministering spirits. They are angels that impart strange levels of graces. Ah They will touch you where you are It will be like fire they will touch you where you are as they touch you they release your miracles as they touch you they release your breakthroughs as they touch you they break those chains nah. they are touching you on behalf of families touching you on behalf of families
direction that's what i hear god is giving men direction it's like an anointing it will come on you outside and inside direction and end to that confusion right now it's coming like light but then you will hear him direct you direction 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 what is that area of confusion his light shines upon it right now for marriage direction 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 for where to settle down geographic location direction is coming by the holy ghost direction somebody is praying and say lord show me the lord is saying i am showing you is coming upon your spirit i'm giving you direction on what to do direction hallelujah i'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone and the lord is saying take it out lord where are those people whose destinies have been buried as i'm speaking right now inside and outside right now right now as i speak by the power of the holy spirit right now where you are sitting you will receive a visitation i pull it out this is a miracle service i pull it out now oh yes release that lady i see it in the spirit release that lady right now release that lady's destiny something is happening to you where you are something is happening to you where you are begin to receive it by faith like the dew of heaven resting in this place inside and outside lord we receive what you are doing sit down if you can those under the anointing just leave them John 3 16 
I just want to The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. Right now. I don't know why God is just interrupting. Please check it. Check it. Check it right now. In fact, I see three people. Check it. This is a family. Please, we are not playing games. Inside and outside. I'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they, when they are alright let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly Augustina Augustina I'm hearing a name like Augustina Augustina there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly Augustina the Lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what I'm seeing oppression as it's happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside the second overflow, the anointing of the Spirit is touching somebody outside. The Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft. It has tied your life and your family down and the Lord is telling me, release Augustina. Release Augustina. Release Augustina. Release Augustina. And as it's happening to you, it's also happening to that other lady in the name of Jesus I release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify I release both of you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a whole family that came. There is a family God wants me to minister to. You are five. Five people. I don't know if there is a mother. I'm seeing a family with five people. Who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you're five in all please when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world for God so loved the world and the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son. Please listen. Don't worry about what is happening. Just let me have your attention, please. He says he gave his only begotten son. This, we can take it from there. That, that statement, he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now please help her wrap her I command that spirit to leave her right now now And never return in the name of Jesus release her family release I see a lot of money being tied release it now as you go 
in the name of Jesus the Christ hallelujah so the Bible says he gave his only begotten son hallelujah for God so loved the world the word there is cosmos the social system that has to do with people listen please and has to do with the entire territory the social system he says for God so loved the world and he proved that love listen listen because love must be manifested to be appreciated are we together now and the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son and please don't be confused there is a name that son is called Jesus because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father but the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophets abraham samson isaac judges everything was tracing to the genealogy of jesus christ and then the bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth listen jesus came with a message and his message was very simple he said repent the word repent is not the word turn from your sins no preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding the word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another please just be patient with me this family or minister are we together now turning from one direction to the other but the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ is that men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said for the remission of your sins so the bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me he suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all of my when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it just sing it with me i really want to worship you my god you have won my heart and i am yours forever and ever i will love you for someone to use and withdraw money he gave he donated and Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things listen 
Jesus did not just come, please I want you to pay attention, it's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible, the Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. He knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet. There would be so many sick people, like the ten lepers. He would heal one and just walk away. Because his desire was not to show power. His desire was to do the will of the Father. He was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry. People tried to say, look, build a ministry. And he said, no, 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 no. no. I can of my own do nothing as I see my father do. So he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified with Christ. Are we together now? And then the Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him john chapter 6 says except you eat my flesh and drink my blood you cannot be part of me you cannot have my life so while they were taking the communion they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters i know that we celebrate easter today is good friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good if he refused to lay down his life listen when Pilate looked at him and said don't you know i have the power to free you he said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father he said i have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words i was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about good friday but we never know what made it good this is what made it good that a man gave his son then the son gave his life. Are we together now? It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse. In fact, he was tempted to negotiate it. He said, Father, if it be possible, you are the all-wise God. There is another way you can do this thing. But then he remembered, nevertheless, I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant. Are we together now? The father gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life. And don't be confused. He gave his blood. He gave his righteousness. Are we together now? He gave up his position. And when he was doing that, he had you in mind. Listen, listen. He never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself. The Bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity, yet without sin. But he took your place because the Bible says we all like sheep have gone astray. Right? He said every man has gone his own way. With our ideas about God, our ideas about success. Would you give our mother a chair, please? Let her just sit down. I'll minister to you in a moment, please. 
At least let her just sit down. Hallelujah. Well, all of you, you can sit down. I'll call you now. They're all looking at me. Um, sit down. Especially this, my friend. Friend, how are you? What's his name? Aaron. Kelvin. Just get somewhere for, that they can sit around. And I'll attend to you now. Just five minutes. Let me establish what. Hallelujah. So, please come, sir. I offend a government and they are about to destroy me. Listen, please. About to destroy me. And the Bible testifies that I have no power in myself. And then someone comes. And while I'm on my way to destruction, he interrupts. And he says, I love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way. This is what I want you to do. Stand back and watch me pay the price. And while he was on the way, while they were flogging him, in his mind he was saying, mankind, I hope you are watching. This would have been you. I hope you are watching. I hope you are watching the scars. As he began to bleed, he said, I hope you are watching. See, if two people come and they tell you they love you, the best answer to give those two people is, I'm watching. Because love is a verb. Are we together now? I am what? Watching. All kinds of things have told you they love you, but they left you. But Jesus said, watch my love. I'm not going to make noise about it. First, stand back. And while they flogged him, he said, if it's for you, I will still go the extra mile. And they flogged him. The father gave him, he gave his health. The father gave him, he gave his prosperity. The father gave him, when we say his life, let's break it down. What, what is in his life that he gave? Because that's what he gave you. What was in the life of Jesus? The ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases. The father gave him. He gave it away. In exchange. The Bible says he was rich. But he gave it. Are we together now? He had a reputation of dominion. But he laid it aside. I hope you know. That they stripped him naked. The covering you see around is just for social reasons when you are watching movies. A 33 year old man, naked. Children watched him. Adults watched him. People mocked at him and said, you claim to be a king. And he said, this is all for you. Are we together? Blood dripping out from every part of his body. Every time he was tempted to give up. He said, no, if I give up, where I stop is where you must continue. And I know that even if it was for the last nail, you still would not be able to take it. See, listen, if you think what happened on the cross is what Jesus just died for, physically, you will be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified. What he stopped you from was not the physical activity. It was what was happening in the spirit. You can do the physical one. I guarantee you people have been crucified, but you don't know what that meant in the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening he became adam from gethsemane from gethsemane to the cross he was no longer the christ he was jesus adam the very man of sin mortality came upon him please listen and the father kept watching he had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So there was no negotiation about receiving. The blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory. Are we together now? When they took him to that cross and they nailed him, as his blood began to drip upon the earth, and in that excruciating pain, it was a way of torturing criminals. He was not just looking at Mary and John. He was looking at you. He was looking at me. He was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness. 
and he said if it's for you i will do it but he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight three words that represented victory it is finished oh hallelujah I didn't study English but I know that when a man says it is finished it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished that 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 christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings having to atone for your sins by your own strength i brought it to an end that ability of saying qualify and come to God. He said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation. My own access. Like I organize a program and I invite someone. And while you are about to drive him, I say no, no, no. That's my guest. Come. But you are not only his guest. He also made you the one to be celebrated. Please listen. There is a dimension of this we have not learned. And this is what I want to teach us. When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam and every man that came from him let me have the keys revelations 1 verse 1 when you read down what i am he that was dead but now i am alive and i hold the keys he collected the keys listen access to the earth access to dominion access to god's life that's the most important part the life of god i'm going to explain it when he resurrected watch this did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did, man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just God. Your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice. The Bible says they are the foundations, meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it. But now he says, every time you think justice, let mercy begin to speak. Watch this. I really want you to get a revelation of this. It will change your life. Every time the voice of judgment, the voice of mess of, of justice begins to speak, I will not fight it. But remember that I not only paid the price, I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path. Are we together now? When that happened, a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man. A man is only justified when he justified. The father put it in his office. 
Are we together? Watch what he did. When he sat down on that throne, he told man, there is another dimension you do not know. I know that I paid the price for you. But I want to teach you another dimension. We paid it in covenant. Listen. You did not participate in anything. But out of my love, I took you and made it as though in me, you were the one who paid that price. So not only did he die for you, you died in him. Are we together now? So in Christ, every man's iniquity, every man's um, basis for accusation was nailed in Christ. Paul saw this in Galatians 2.20 and he said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he said, I live. Yet not I, but Christ is an exchange. He died for me. Now I live in him. In other words, the day Jesus Christ dies, there is no reason why I should be alive because we are in him. So my life is no longer something I get outside of him. My life is an overflow of what I have received from him. And he so designed that from that point, hence, listen, Everything I derive will be because of him. In him and with him. My joy is because of him. My prosperity is because of him. Please listen. My peace is because of him. So at no point in this kingdom would I be found leaning on my own strength. Because the moment I lean on my own strength, the judgment of the law catches up with me. The only basis for vindication is to be in him. This is what he said. He says, He that abides in me and I abide in him, he said, the same will bear much fruit. He said, for without me, the word without means outside of me and everything that I have done, ye can do nothing. The basis of the believer's victory is what Christ did on the cross. But not just what Christ did on the cross. Because that's what a lot of people say. Oh, I know what he did. No. Let's continue. John 3 verse 16. Please, give it to us so that we can finish up. It's not enough to know what Jesus did. That's not where I'm going tonight. This is the part that concerns you. That whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life you can believe jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see, you see where we miss it? We have been believing in rubbish. Who is the him? Who? He said God, no. Believing in God doesn't give you life. Who is the him? That's where I want us to get to tonight. You, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd. Believe me, you will not be saved. Believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation. Are we together? Believe in him. Who is him? The Bible, I love the way the Bible puts it. As many as believed in him. See that? Brothers and sisters, I am many things. And all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me. Are we together? A child believes a father. A worker believes a CEO. 
Ejimi's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in Ejimi Adegbeye, the multi-millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice, you may get intelligence, you may get all of this. I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. You can be healed and still go to hell. Please hear me. Many of us have believed him as a savior. You can have, I mean, you can have a, what do we call it, a, as a shepherd. What dimension of him have you believed? I will tell you now. Ready? There is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen, please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord, a winner, a champion, one qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says, whoever believed that, listen, whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said he shall not perish. The word perish is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says, whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end your your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now don't mind this, my funny friend. Where will you spend eternity? Not will you spend. You must spend it. The word eternal life there is the word divine life. It's the Greek word zoe. I know you've heard it. Many of us quote it, but just listen. The word zoe, listen. Let me describe it for you. It's a life that does not want depend on any external input for its sustenance it's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a vague thing that comes up no 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 no. it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god Many people have come out for altar call. Father, 
I, 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 I'm, I'm born again. I believe in you. This and that. But they have not received it. He said, as many as received. Brothers and sisters, you can reject it. Many seated here have rejected it. I give you my ATM card. You refuse to collect it. You can reject it. Yet you need what only my ATM card will give you. You can borrow money from Pastor Lawrence, borrow money from uh, Promise and so on and so forth. And I say, take my ATM card. The point is, you don't just take it and hold it. When you take the card, something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow. You see, the life of God is not, how do I put it now? It's not like something you just put in your pocket. All right, look at this. I have this handkerchief. So we say, I have the life of God. Do you have it? Yes, no. That's not the idea of the life of God. The idea of the life of God is like a programming. Something enters you and begins to walk in you. It is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes... He begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom. All of a sudden, listen, because of that life, you are now spiritually alive. You can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this. Why am I always failing? You will never just know that ordinarily. It takes that life to open that awareness in you. Are we together now? It's like glasses. You all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective. No. I'm not supposed to fail like this. I can't, I can't just be taking it like that again. Something must change. No, I've seen a trend in my family. People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, he who has the son has eternal life. Zoe. God's kind of life. Now watch this. Although you have that life, it takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit, please listen, to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life. This is where a lot of people miss it. Oh, I have life. I have life. The same way you say, I have a car. The same way you say, I have an ATM card. Can you use it? I have given it to you. Do you know how to activate the operation of that life? Do you know how to make that life work in you? We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief comment not. But to steal, to kill. If you don't have anything, he doesn't come to steal. Are we together now? Satan comes. His first ministry is deception. What is deception? Painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it. So you believe that I do not have this life. If I truly had this life, I should not be sick. Are we together now? If I have this life, I should be doing exploits academically. If I have this life, now listen. Here is where the confusion has come in the body of Christ. There are those who are saying you have this life. There are those who are saying you don't have this life. You better fight your way into receiving it. Both of them are incomplete. On one side, you are seeing the supposed by faith. You believe, you know, you acknowledge that that life is in you. But then you are not seeing the difference the Bible said should be produced. Are we together now? This is the dilemma of many Christians. I gave my life to Christ from the day I got born again. My life has not changed. It's been 10 years. I will tell you why. Eternal life is being frustrated within you. Because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 
he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall what die like men men listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave i can receive the life of god that contains health vitality prosperity and still be under a cause i tell you hear me brothers and sisters because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of god's word therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creation but we do not know that the communications of god are twofold there is the prophetic communication of god speakings according to his realm of existence but there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word it is the nature of god to call things as though they already appear are we together now hebrews chapter 2 he put it very beautifully he said god had put all things under the subjection of man he said god did not leave anything left but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we all read it together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today let's see how the war of tomorrow will be i know that there will be all kinds of things are we together now so although they read that there is victory in christ the truth is they don't believe it they just know let's fight per day they are the ones who suspect everybody and everything if Sam looks at you like this is a sign that he's an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both are wrong. Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy jesus christ has done everything he needs to do but i have a role to play nobody gets saved just because jesus died you will go to hell there is a response please listen the idea of grace does not mean not participating no the idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration are we together uh -huh. the difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation there is a participation that is unto the flesh there is a participation that is a response of faith that is the participation that brings results are we together now so if the bible says by tithing you open your heavens when i'm tithing I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness 
but in any case there must be reception by faith and that in itself is a participation this looks very simple but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are are not receiving i don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back i want you to live victorious if all you think is healing you will be frustrated if all you think is on my think god's life and all its content is away the life of god that can become any and everything any and everything christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom he's been made unto me strength he's been made unto me prosperity that life is the word and as the word opens up it shows me the dimensions of its operation and then i look out first to believe number two to respond everybody say believe say respond this is your part as a believer you when you respond to what you do not believe is a waste of time so the bible says whoever believes in him you receive but that life begins to teach you certain things and you respond to those teachings please listen to me part of what that life teaches you is that satan is a trickster he's a deceptive person and he will not just because you have life leave you the bible says he left jesus for a season the next time he would come he didn't come directly again he came through peter and jesus said i still detect you and the devil says do not i mean god said do not be unaware speaking through the apostle of the devil's strategy are we listening to me please because many people get up bragging i'm not under any cause i'm not under this christ has redeemed me from the cause of the lord that's not a lie but you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality so you will still brag around and die like mere men are we together now i really believe in jesus christ and i really believe in his word but i also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases and my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this brothers and sisters there is a part there is a part that you have to play believing is not enough believing talks of conviction persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement but there must be a response your response is your action of faith so the bible says this in the book of hebrews there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god in spite of what christ has done there still remains a rest and then it says let us therefore labor this is paul in the new testament what is the idea of labor push god aside no let us find out our place of response let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is and he says whoever labors like that there is a guarantee he will enter his rest there is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body believe me it's not just by claiming um, you will claim and be shocked there is a way you respond remember during our time of fasting we're showing you different mysteries these are all the components that are called the life of god right he gave you life but it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit so satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons one they have rejected the life and the solution to that is an altar call i'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering 
the second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction deception the first deception is that you don't need to do anything again oh brothers and sisters hear me i fear god it's a big deception as free as salvation claims to be if you do not respond you are going to hell there is always a participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of god's life there is a participation if there will ever be prosperity there is a participation now the participation is a response of faith god credits it at the response of faith not an addition to what he has done it's a compliment so he would see a sick body and say your faith you believed i am able to heal you you were convinced based on the report you had and now i gave you an instruction waiting for your participation you got up your faith he calls it your faith so what is your faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of god's word believing is not faith no 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 believing is the first step to faith you can believe without having faith a believer is not a possessor a believer who responds is a possessor there are so many people listen to me who are trusting god for all kinds of things here i'm teaching you how to get results tonight god is not a herbalist there is a participation a jimmy this is a gift for you what is he supposed to do watch this his response now he's standing up is a sign that he believes me i can choose to hide it please sit down sir sorry i'm using you hope i'm sorry i'm just doing this game with your husband hallelujah hey jimmy do you believe i'm having a phone and that phone is for you if you believe it walk up to me faith this is faith the walking to me although he has not seen it so he's putting my integrity to the line it's up to me to prove that I'm not lying. So I bring it out. If he comes to me, listen. If he comes to me and I say, ah, I'm playing. He believed. I'm the one who is a liar. And the Bible said, God looked for anybody who is greater than him. So that he will show you he's not playing games. Are we together now? Let's look at one scripture. Thank you, sir. Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8 35 just that one scripture and then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister Romans chapter 8 35 okay give us from verse uh, 32 32 thank you everyone please read if you are a Christian if you are a child of God this is Good Friday where it, even if you are not a child of God, read. I will soon make an altar call. One, two, read. He that spared not, stop. Who is the he now? God. He's trying to make a statement and he's tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before. It's like saying, he that built this bridge in Kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something. So in case you doubt what I'm about to do, find out whether I did that thing or not. He's about to make a statement. And he's saying, don't you dare doubt me for what I'm about to say. He that did not spare his what? Own son. But delivered him up. For who? What's the next statement? How shall he not with him also freely give us what? This is God speaking. He said, look at me. Your healing is a lesser thing. I gave Jesus. What is healing? I gave Jesus. What is witchcraft? If I did not, if I spared my son, then you will know that there are some things I can spare. But I carried my son. I gave him. And now I have gathered you to give.
give you healing and you are asking God this my this I've been bleeding for six months non-stop and God said if I spare not Jesus I will not spare anything whatever it would take me to prove myself I will do it if it means me killing somebody I will do it I I gave my son who will I not be able to kill listen this is the basis for conviction so every time the devil is trying to say look 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 will that prophecy work just remember Jesus Jesus begged the father to have mercy the father refused so listen Jesus said father reconsider the father said you are joking stay there and now God is saying I want to bless you and the devil is saying no and Jesus is saying God is saying just believe me and watch how I will do anything it takes is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am yeah. is there anything too hard for me to do. I am that I am. Hallelujah. If the father did not give Jesus, it's like a man. Listen, it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife. And the guy said, I'm a just person. And he punished his wife. Then somebody throws a and says, Oh, God, you know we are Nigerians. What do you think he's going to do? You say, That's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you, listen. If it took God refusing. To even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake then I assure you whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night yeah. hallelujah do you believe me we are going to pray and say Lord help my own belief that listen 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 that spirit that makes me keep wondering can God do it listen don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here, all kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here supernaturally that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth it came out like that without surgery and people were saying ah can you marry time has gone time has gone nonsense i prayed for the card and to the shame of the devil we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of may <laughs> hallelujah brothers and sisters your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says, but can they really hear your voice? We are going to pray. The only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say, Lord, I lift my faith. I'm ready to respond based on my conviction. Lift your voice and begin to pray. have a part to play I lift up that wall of unbelief please pray pray you are able are you praying Able 
do just what he says he will do he's gonna fulfill every promise to you yes the part don't give up don't give up on God cause he won't The second prayer point, I already sense the anointing of the Spirit. I'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight. Listen, please, just follow these instructions. I told you your response is where your faith is. There are things that should go. Don't just keep quiet and watch them. The Bible says speak to the mountain. Open your mouth and begin to mention them. Don't keep quiet. Mountain of financial hardship, mountain of cancer, mountain of mediocrity. Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight. In the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond please listen do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4 don't turn there the Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful please let me sit down sir watch this it says they saw a man who had been there and he he, he called on them for arms and he thought they were going to give him arms Peter and John and he, he said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak I put pressure. It's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not. God will not just get up and act. Listen, it was God that put this miracle service. You're leaving your house to come is enough response already. Are you listening to me? You're going to say, Lord, I put pressure on your integrity. You asked us to come, we have come. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be afraid of saying it. Pray. Lord, you ask us to come. You are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service. Now, oh God, we are here. Put pressure on his integrity. We have come, oh God. That you prove yourself. Shake it up, Baba Baba Rada Baba Baba. Shake it up, Raska Daba Lada Bas. We have come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now keep standing, everybody. Before we continue. 
there are people here I don't want you to waste your time and I don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the Bible says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of God I have heard your word I have been struggling with this thing but tonight I truly want to dedicate everything my all to Jesus Christ or you are saying man of God I have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and I need to make my way straight with the Lord I'm tired of where I am those two categories of people inside and outside I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now God bless you quickly please I'll count just one to five if the Holy Ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to Jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me God bless you run to Jesus Oh, win that war, win that war tonight. This is an issue of your destiny. Koinonia, can you appreciate them? This is a harvest for the King of Glory. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired of living my life my own way, mismanaging my life. On this Easter Friday, I give everything to you. Keep coming. You are saying, Lord, Easter Friday, you die for god so loved me he died for me i'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling there are still people outside please run and catch up quickly quickly as the holy ghost is speaking to you and say join them make your way quickly you're saying lord i'm tired tired of habits tired of addictions run to the cross come running come running Come running to the mercy seat. Keep coming. All of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the Lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others God is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you sleep away No man condemns you. The mercy, the mercy. are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ 
he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and say no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah i pray for you i declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast so you join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i'd like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening god bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say lord my time for visitation is here i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on till my answer comes i won't give up lord i won't give up i'll keep holding on until my change comes lord i won't give up Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer request very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of, of... I understand that Koinonia is being streamed live right now. Can we honor God for that? Yes. 
It's been streamed live. We appreciate the media for their creativity. And for all our online people, we love you. The same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, quickly, quickly, please, your prayer request. Listen, for those of us who are just coming, I, I don't want you to think this is some ritual. Believe me, God answers prayers here. God gave us a revelation. Hallelujah. And the revelation was the revelation of Hezekiah. Hallelujah. When he took the threat letter and the Bible says he put it before the Lord and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. So please write it very quickly. And then ushers, let's be very fast. Please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants to do just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones Please make sure the online community participate. There's a God that answers prayers here. Remember we spoke about faith. Those outside, ushers, help them. If I were you, I would begin to prophesy over my request. And say, I wrote you because you must live my life. Or you must come into my life. begin to pass your request very quickly very quickly very quickly my goodness I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place that's why I'm saying we should hurry up we feel the rain of your love we see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit, now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear, so let it rain, let it rain, would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in elorin to ekiti we passed a small village please listen 
a small village the border between Kwara State and Ekiti State and I saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind I was saying Guinness Book of Record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we're pastors we went to minister in equity and we're going back to the north but we discerned that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we played it was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying Ejimi. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him so the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah. when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures I thought he was the wife of the man when he was in his old age you know like Ketura that was the one and only woman he married that means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something alive these guys can bear me witness no glasses no crutches no nothing I said what kind of grace is this brothers and sisters there are mysteries you've heard me say this thing and when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song i don't know what it was i don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know i was i don't know if i was sharing with them i felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as i was feeling i knew i got this thing immediately she got it i told her i said let's snap i held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah I, mean, I was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had i said what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called afe babalola university the man himself is 86 years alive and doing well in those regions if you are 80 years you are still a child believe me then when we were returning i saw the shock of my life 141 years one how many 41 i saw the obituary 
he just died 141 I said I got it let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life no see listen if you don't believe in transference of grace you will die young don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating I didn't see any hospital around here I just saw a church and people is you can be 190 and not be able to talk but you are 141 the guy 132 was still serving as a man of God you are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife the, the mama tapped me in this place once you are 60 years you hold crutches what cause is that I always believed it but now that I've seen it there's that song that says my eyes have seen don't play it my eyes have seen it there are many strange things that will fall today listen if you care you can receive if you don't when we were coming we were in the plane and the plane was bouncing like a football i just remember that old woman i said plane you are joking i'm surrounded by too many mysteries please believe me hallelujah 86 years still a lecturer 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the Lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what I hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand lift the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now 
right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shiba baba kata altars 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 right now shake it 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 in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies jakatarata mandereto shota at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray
go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the bible says believe in the lord your god pray pray don't look at me pray open your mouth and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Father we turn go ahead and pray Lord my request is turned into a testimony I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth. We command the firmaments. We command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every body placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit. And we set these ones free in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, standing upon your promise to us, upon this altar, the heavenly portals opened in this place. We command a performance of the requests, the desires placed here tonight. In the name of Jesus, we decree the heavens answer speedily. Everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb, receive in the name of Jesus. Promotion from on high, receive in the name of Jesus. An end to demonic oppression. It happens now in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes open. Death ears open. Destiny is moved forward. In the name of Jesus. Satanic burdens removed. In the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord because speedily. According to the seasons of life. They receive a performance. In the matchless name of Jesus we decree. Amen Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet. And receive the prophecy. You can. I saw a spirit. And I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Shekete Kappa, Sheke Rosata. The kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart. The kind of performance you have never seen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work. Beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of Jesus Christ now I want to pray for you father that old Baba prayed 
and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it oh let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me i was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and i looked at that person and i vowed that till i die till i go to be with the lord i will not collect loan from anybody living or dead i made that determination from the depth of my heart i said lord if you cannot honor me let me die like that i pray for someone here see listen if doors are closing against you is demonic don't ever say it's because i don't know so 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 bad. if if the person knew me it's a lie there is a mantle the bible says everyone loved esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it i pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you but i pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely 
because this what I'm, there is an anointing for what I'm telling you whatever you start I don't care what it is whether it is relationship or whatever and it ended but not by God we put life back to it right now I say it again whatever you started that ended but not by God by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah give God praise my goodness I wish we had time I wish we had time. dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye